Hi, I'm Megan Segura. And I'm Eric J. Mack. And this is The Daily Dish, Bravo's official podcast. Yeah. Eric, can you believe it? It has been 10 years since Watch What Happens Live premiered. Woo! From originally starting as a stream show on Wednesdays to having a daily spot on Bravo's Late Night, the well-known clubhouse has become a pop culture icon. But the decade-long legend that is Watch What Happens Live wouldn't have been as huge a phenomenon without its dedicated staff. Oh, and like Andy Cohen. (laughs) In honor of the show's milestone, we got a chance to sit down with some of the Watch What Happens Live staffers who have been there through all of the show's infamous moments. Moments like John Mayer surprising Andy on his birthday, iconic answers to plead the fifth, and which is definitely my favorite that I talk about all the time, Brandy Glanville tossing wine at Jeff Lewis. This crew has seen it all. So up first, we have Melissa France. She started in 2012 as a segment producer and on her first day pitched a hilarious game involving crystal balls. Now she's a supervising producer, but she still holds the superlative of best eyes with the Watch What Happens Live staffers. Here's that interview. We are here with Melissa France, supervising producer for Watch What Happens Live. Hello, Melissa. Hi, thanks for having me. Of course, how are you? So good. So tell me a little bit about what is a supervising producer on the show? Uh, For me, supervising producer, I sort of go over um, all of the creative. A lot of our our researchers and our amazing segment producers, they pitch a lot of the games and titles and clips and what we should show for each, you know, for each show. So I go over that and then we sort of um, sort through what we think Andy would like to see as a pitch and we, we pitch it to Andy. And that's one thing everybody needs to know that Andy has full creative response. Like he just is the one that says, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. But Mm -hmm. so, which is great because some, it's not always up to us, but um, he's amazing at it. So yeah, we just, you know, look over all of the creative and figure out what is best to actually air on television. And now how long have you been with Watch What Happens Live? I started in um, 2012 as a segment producer. And I was so excited. I found out that it was going five nights a week. So I stalked Deirdre Connolly, our executive producer. And I was like, can I just get an interview, please? And I got the job, and it was, I mean, I've been there for seven years. It's crazy. What are some of the favorite segments that you've helped produce? Um, Well, one thing, my first day, we had a meeting with Andy, and his first thing was, welcome, you know, new team. There was a lot of us new people. And he said, whatever you do, whatever you pitch, it can be crazy, it could be dirty. If you think it's too nuts, pitch it, because it might make it to air. And I remember one of my one of my first pitches, I was it was like um something with like what's in the crystal ball sack. I just wanted to make <laughs> a game where we could say ball sack. So the game was we had Mama Elsa on from Miami Housewives. Oh my god. And you know how she does the whole like well, God rest her soul. Makes you rest I in know. peace, yes. yes. <laughs> um, but we were having her on with Mark Consuelos. So we had a sack filled with crystal balls and with like pictures of celebrities and she had to say what she felt about each celebrity. So that ball sack game, you know, yeah. went to air. That would be my favorite too, I think. When he p- <laughs> I was so scared to pitch it. I was like, they're going to think I'm crazy. And then when Andy was like, yeah, let's do that. I was like, what is this show? This is so cool. So that was one of my first ones that I was like, okay, you could basically do everything. Right. Yeah. yeah the possibilities are endless, truly. It, exactly. <laughs> it sort of went south when one of the um, crystal balls broke. So Mark Consuelos was putting his hand in just charred glass. Who was in the crystal ball that broke? I think it was Lindsay Lohan. Oh, I read that you were voted best eyes by the Watch What Happens Live staff, and I can tell why, because you have very pretty eyes. Oh my god, that was years ago. (laughs) They did this crazy thing on BravoTV.com where they're like, you know, you know, uh, best eyes, or what are some other superlatives, like, you know, class clown. Yeah. So we all had to vote on each other. And I was like, I don't want to vote on our team. We love each other. But like, then is somebody going to get mad? But I can't right. believe you brought that I up. I dug That's that so up. so funny. Well, because I wanted to ask about what the camaraderie is like with the rest of the staff. Because it is a smaller team compared to a lot of other productions. It's a smaller team, but it's the best team I've ever worked with. Everybody gets along. It's just such a great, a great community. Andy and our executive producer, Deirdre, they just, it's just lighthearted and fun and it's not stressful and live television is 
very stressful. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, it's just we like we all love each other. It's so great. When you look back at the last like seven or so years that you've been on the show, do you have like a favorite moment, whether it was not necessarily a segment you produced, but maybe something that happened on air and then like a least favorite? Oh, um, <laughs> I think the best moment for me and maybe some others was when we had Andy's 50th birthday show with John Mayer. Mm -hmm. That was the first time in a really long time that all of us were in the control room. We were nervous. We were excited. We were, we, I mean, he was not hosting the show. John was going to host the show and Andy was going to play all of the games that he's been making celebrities play for all of these years. And it was so fun and he was so happy. He had no idea that John Mayer was hosting. I mean, we really kept it under wraps, but he was so happy with us, and we just wanted to make him happy for his 50th. And that was that was one of the best, I want to say, like days of uh, Watch What Happens Definitely. Live. Definitely. He yeah. melted into his he seat did. when John was it That's was my so favorite. Cute. Once John starts singing that song, Andy just melts in his chair. I mean, and I any of like, us would. I, we all did, by the way. We were all like, oh, God. Puddles on the floor. Yeah. Um, but that was one of the best. And I want to say... I love when we all go to um, L.A. and we went to South by Southwest because the show is a very small. The clubhouse, you guys have been there. Like, mm-hmm. it's it's really small and it's, I mean, we're a well-oiled machine. So we, when we can get out and do something really big and then find out that, I mean, the audience in New York City is only 35 people. But we took it to the Will Turn last time and it was I mean, almost 2,000 2, people, I think. Ooh. So... For us, it's like, oh, my God, people actually watch us. They they know, you know, it, it was really, really great. Yeah, tell us a little bit more about those larger shows because I feel like I've heard they are a different kind of stress just because it is so much, such a bigger audience. Well, what we want to do is I remember we went to South by Southwest and Andy's note was let's get out there and utilize the city. So we were in Austin. And I think it might have been Andy's idea. He's like, let's um, let's go to a strip club and have um, our guests play Name That Stripper. <laughs> and we were like, okay. That was my show. So I was like, okay, I now have to go out, find a strip club that will let me come in and with a camera and, you know, take pictures of these strippers and then have them sign releases. And some of these ladies, their parents didn't know that they were right, doing this right. to go through college and... And some of these, I got like eight to ten girls to, you know, take pictures. And I was sitting there in the strip club in Austin. A girl didn't have any clothes on. And I'm just having her sign a release form. And I was like, what is my job? I love this. This is, it's amazing. So when we go out, you know, we want to like sort of utilize what we have there in the city. Because we are always sort of like sort of stuck in New York City here. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just much bigger we had the in LA we had a doorbell show we've had doorbell shows in New York before but it's like you can only fit what like six ladies on the stage oh yeah so did you see that doorbell show in LA we had everybody everyone everybody east coast west coast captain sandy the gay shark reza (laughs) I mean it was everybody and for us to sort of pull that off and 22 minutes really of content right it was it's very satisfying it's, yeah it's really really fun and just to see all the fans um come out and really like appreciate what andy does and what we do it's 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 very gratifying yeah i i come from a theater background so i yeah. kind of compare it to like putting on a show like it only it's it is on air but it only kind of happens once right and it is all of this energy put into this one thing that happens one time and each time it's the same but different you exactly know? exactly every show is different um i know we do we do bring back a lot of like the games that we usually play but but we um in la we really try to go for it try to get as many people on, on stage as we can luann performing you know money can't buy a class at the will turn that probably skyrocketed her you know cabaret career right right um <laughs> but yeah it's very different for us and i would say here in new york Again, we're a well-oiled machine, so I don't think we really get nervous anymore. But in L.A., it's like, here we are. We're in a truck. We're not near the stage at all. We have our directors and all of our tech guys and us in this truck. And we're like, okay, we're going live. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> Let's watch what happens. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and it's worked out, but it's it's a little stressful. But again, it's so fun that, I don't know, funny things have happened. Like we, I don't know if you guys hear them, but sometimes we do sound effects as a drinking word or just to make fun of one of our guests. And so we have Kristen Doty's suck a dick on our sound effect. And we have um, 
Rod Stewart saying, take me trousers off. So <laughs> you have to make sure that you don't touch these sound effects because when we're live, if you touch them, something, I mean, it's going to play. Yeah. So we were at the Wiltern and it, it was the best best thing ever uh, our executive producer she was and she doesn't really want to be near the sound effects because it could just go crazy and she put her elbow on one of the sound effects when Dorit was talking Dorit stopped talking and then Deirdre she did not mean to at all but she pressed the suck a dick with her um, <laughs> elbow and all throughout the will turn it was suck a dick take <laughs> me trousers off so everything <laughs> stopped and we were dying in the control room it was a great moment and he was like what's happening back there that's but, one of the best things about live TV. I know. You never know what's going to happen. I know. We'll always have that story. <laughs> I wanted to ask about the clubhouse here in New York. It's such an infamous set with so many different items from so many shows. And things keep on coming in. Yeah, yeah. always. So if you could pick one item to keep for yourself and bring home, what would it be? Oh, to bring home. Um, I would say the most iconic, I think, is Tamara's implant. <laughs> it's been there. For, it's been there for years. It was there before I even got, even got there. So, I mean, and the bunny. Who doesn't want the bunny? I know. That's... I thought about stealing it when we bartended. I said to Sarah, our producer, I was like, I'm going to take the bunny. Isn't it crazy when you <laughs> see the bunny, you're like starstruck? You're yeah. like, that's the actual bunny that was given to Rena. Yeah, you can feel the juju. Yeah, around and now it. it has the ball gag on it. So, <laughs> right. I mean, <laughs> it's it's just a lot of layers. It's a complete item now. Exactly. And then Gaga. <laughs> P or Lindsay Lohan's cigarette. Mm -hmm. um, just so many fun things. These are historical artifacts. They are. <laughs> I, and Andy really takes it very seriously. He's like, where did the implant go? Did somebody move the implant? And we're like, we don't know where the implant. We fi we'll find the implant. We will find the implant. We, we rush the implant in. <laughs> but we take that stuff very seriously. I want to talk a little bit about some guests, too. Who is your dream guest to get on the show? You've had so many people over the years, but... There's a few that I feel like Michelle just... Obama. Mm -hmm. Oh I mean, yes, I, we just we have to get her. When Oprah was there, that was crazy. Yeah, and I think the first time we were like, okay, this show is blowing up, is when Meryl Streep came on. Mm -hmm. That was insane, just to have her in the clubhouse and being totally fine. You know, pleading the fifth and talking about a Mary Shag kill. Like, really, we're gonna ask Meryl Streep these questions, yeah. and she was down for it. And we were like, this is kind of cool. I heard she's very lovely and very professional she, in she all She was settings. wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, she was great. On the other side of wonderful and super cooperative, have you had any oh. divas on the show? Well, you know that diva that everybody talks about, Mariah Carey. <laughs> but this is the thing. We love her diva -ness. Right. It's hysterical. I mean, Andy has to change his seat. He doesn't change his seat for anybody because some woman 15 years ago told her that she had a good side. Right. So she can't be in the, you know, the guest seat. So Andy switches only for Mariah. Um, but she was late. We were live and we had the promo, like we have a 20 second promo before we go live. And usually that's Andy with the guests. And he's like, you know, Mariah Carey's here. But this time he was like, Mariah's on her way and we don't know if she's going to show up. So it might just be me. So, she literally walked in like as it started, right? Oh, we started. We did the cold open. He's like, it's with Mariah Carey, we think. And then I would say maybe 15 seconds went by. We were live and it was just Andy and Mariah just walked in. <laughs> and to this day, I think she made like meant to do that. Oh, yeah. I think totally. so. I think a lot of things she does is are, are very intentional. She wanted to create a moment. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And she, she knows. Oh, she created a moment. All right. We were in the control room. We're like, what are we going to do? A moment do? of panic. Exactly. Um, she's a diva, but we love her. She's been there for like, I want to say like th maybe three or four times. Mm -hmm. um, and then we did have a guest. I won't say a name, but this person, it was a, it was going to be a pre-tape because of scheduling or whatever. And she was... I want to say two hours late, mm. and that was when we were like, you know what, we can't, we can't do this. Like we, everybody has a schedule. So there was one diva that we were just like, we, we just can't do it. We don't have the time. Other people have hard outs too. So she didn't um, end up on the show. But oh, mm, she didn't even make it. She didn't make what it. What does her first name start? I'm not. With? I'll tell you after this. <laughs> okay, fair. <laughs> <laughs> do you still get starstruck when you see some of these people, or have you become kind of desensitized over time? I definitely got starstruck with Oprah because she came um, back 
to the offices where all of us sit and we were just like sort of running around getting ready for the show and she was lovely to each and every one of us she was waving she was shaking hands and she was just so nice she's like thank you for having me um, Jennifer Lawrence what I really liked about her I wasn't starstruck but I was just maybe I was after I saw how cool she was because she was just so excited to be there she was like this is amazing. You guys have the best job in the world. Thank you for your service. And we were like, oh my God, like this huge A-list star appreciates, you know, what our whole team is doing. So it was, it's nice to see that some of those big stars like actually get what we're doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you guys like after the show is over often go out together? I mean, it does go kind of late, but we party all the time together. Do you? I, I I've made some of my best friends. I watch what happens live. Like we um we travel together. We every Wednesday is called our turnt night, and Andy stays and we just drink. And sometimes people get home at four. Sometimes. People don't. <laughs> but yeah, we love to hang out with each other. Again, the team is so lovely. We all love each other. We love working with each other. Um, and it's just like a really good family. And yeah, we just, we really get turned. We, Anthony brings out that music. He's our DJ. Sometimes we have Sonia. Whenever Sonia's on, we know it's going to be a late night. The housewives, I want to say, Sonia sticks around. Sometimes Ramona sticks around. Um, and then Bridget Everett, who's a huge Bravo Liberty fan. Love her. Don't, oh my God. She's, 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 she's so a wild great. animal. <laughs> Love her. She came into the kitchen. She just sat down and she was like making drinks for herself, for us. And she stayed for a, a couple of hours and we got really drunk with her. Um, and then we did for our, um, I think I forget what it was for, but we had a big party at the Cubby Hole, which is our favorite, you know, go to mm -hmm. bar and all of the housewives. It was Teresa. Kyle, she was doing splits at the bar. Um, at Nini Cubby came Hole? At Cubby there's Hole. There's not a lot of room there. No, there's not. We made room. <laughs> we made a lot of room. It was the night, oh, it was the night when Andy um, told everybody that he was going to be a father. Oh. So we had Vicky, we had, um, yeah, Teresa. Who Vicky had at Cubby Hole. Oh, wow. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't stay long, but yeah, some of the housewives are just love to hang out. When we went out to LA, a lot of the West Coast housewives, um, they they come to our rap party and I'm just like look, looking around and I'm like, and this is the best. Right. Yeah, and they're all so nice to us and they love Andy. Andy loves them. But yeah. So we had Darren on the podcast the week that baby Ben was going to be born we didn't know the name we didn't know what was happening but darren like literally was texting andy as she was on the show so we kept trying to get information out of her how far in advance did you guys know about not very Baby far ben? he was he was really really tight-lipped and i really respect that um yeah. everybody there was a schedule where we were trying to figure out because he needed to figure out he was going to go out to la to have right. baby ben and um, take care of him and some of us knew earlier than others because it was sort of like what's going on here yeah but um, when we found out it was amazing but he really kept it hush hush and just really told his super close friends and then when it got pretty close to you know it actually happening you know that's when he told us and I was I was almost crying I mean, yeah, it was such an emotional moment. I like, know. it was such a huge deal. Well, in this everybody office. thought that when he was announcing, he had this big sort of speech and he was taking it very seriously. Yeah. And when he was announcing it, you could see the housewives' faces. They were like, oh, he's retiring. Right. Yeah. And it sounded like he was retiring. Yeah. And then he said, and I'm going to be a father. If you could sum up your Watch What Happens Live career in one phrase, one sentence, what would it be? Hmm. I would say, and this is the total truth, I have the best job in the world working with the most creative and amazing people and just working with Andy as a boss is amazing. I'm li living my dream. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much, Melissa, for coming in. We really appreciate it. Thanks for Happy having me. Happy 10-year anniversary of Watch Thank you, so Live. exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, you got to talk to John Jude, who is the co-executive producer on the show. And basically, he's in Andy's ear all night and is the first line of communication during tapings. Also, for people who followed Sonia Morgan's Caberlesque shows, John Jude was the one playing the electric drums during her performance at the clubhouse. In this interview, he talks about his favorite moments, the origins of the infamous Shotsky, which we have a copy of that here in the studio, as well as some unlikely friendships that stemmed from their show. Let's take a listen to that interview. 
John Jude. Hi. First of all, love your name. Thank you. I love the alliteration. Thank you, well mom. done, mom. <laughs> um, <laughs> welcome to the show. I want you to explain to listeners what it is you do on Watch What Happens Live. Okay, I am a uh, co-executive producer, so I oversee all the creative on the show. So that means I work with our amazing producers and writers and researchers to develop the segments and games that you end up seeing on the show. And then during the actual show, I'm in the control room um, overseeing the, the technical aspects of the show, working with our technical team, our director, our assistant director to make sure everything looks good and is working um, for air. And then while the show's actually happening, um, I'm in Andy's ear. So sometimes you'll see him like look up or uh, that he's listening to me or, or Melissa and um, giving him timings and anything that he might need, sort of his first line of communication during the show. Great. And how long have you been working on the show? So I started season two, so about nine years. Okay. Um, we were still one night a week. Um, my first show was the infamous Daniel Staub, uh, Laurie Michaels performance. Oh my which, God. Yeah. yeah. It was as magical as you could imagine to be in that room. <laughs> you know, I recently had Danielle rewatch that clip oh, and, really? and react to it on camera. And she called out how Lori like was off key. Oh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. That's amazing. So that's iconic. Um, great. Yeah. I, so after all this time on the show, is it does it just run like like so smooth or do you still get nervous before shows um i wouldn't say nervous i think there's definitely an adrenaline rush with live tv i think that's why i've always been attracted to it i started out years ago in, in uh, at mtv on total request live oh my god I know, it, in like the backstreet boys era yes. so um that's sort of it's not nerves it but it's definitely sort of like it's like live theater almost you know like yeah. there's no do-overs you you know you just go out there and hope it all works out and always have a backup plan if something isn't working right but um it's it definitely is a well-oiled machine after all these years we've had people on the show like me for that's been there for you know nine years but um i would say like even the newest people have been there for like three or four years so people you know i think take advantage of the fact that it's a great place to work and they're not leaving and which is great and everyone knows what, what to do and everyone gets along so it's yeah it's 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 a pretty well-oiled machine yeah yeah not to go too far off topic, but who were the VJs when you were at Total Request Live? Oh, okay. Live? Well, it started with Carson. Okay. Um, I was there towards the end of his uh, career. And then we had uh, Caduce, oh, yes. Damien, mm -hmm. Hillary Burton. Okay. Um, those were the three main ones. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So I want to know, do you, do you appreciate the celebrity guests as much as like a Watch What Happens Live fan would? Absolutely. So then who yeah. has like made you a little bit starstruck? I think the first, I mean, I get starstruck on everybody, like, you know, 80s TV stars and whatever. But I think the first time that there was like a palpable buzz in the air was probably either Oprah or Meryl Streep. Yeah. I think, I think those were two women that we were like, oh my God, this is a real thing. This is real now, you know? Yeah. And just knowing that they, they were in our offices was exciting. But yeah, I get excited about everybody, top to bottom. Well, I think people want to know what it's like working with Andy Cohen honestly and I'm not just saying this because he's the boss but um he is so good to work for because a he used to be a producer so he knows what goes into the process so he he never really has unrealistic demands and then also he allows us to be as creative and weird and off the wall as we could possibly be I mean I know when I first started he sort of gives this speech to everyone when they first start but he was basically like listen if you can see what we're, if what we're doing can be seen on another show, don't pitch it. If it's not weird, if it's not out there, let's not even bother doing it. And that is so like freeing, you know, to be able to not have any limits on your creativity. And I think it's a good example for the, um, for the younger um, kids on the team because you don't really see that that often in TV production. You know, usually people are much more like, it has to be this, has to be this, but it's been really exciting to sort of have carte blanche to just do whatever we want. So with that in mind, was there ever a night after the show wrapped that you guys were like, that was too weird? Um, <laughs> uh, honestly, I don't think it's ever been too 
weird actually and if it is too weird andy's like that was too weird that was awesome <laughs> the only time i feel like we're sort of like Ugh, we get a sick feeling in our stomach after the show is when maybe there's some weird chemistry between the guests or a guest doesn't really want to open up or doesn't really get our show i feel like that's the time where we're like "Ugh, that was that sucked you know well, we're about specifics here. So yeah. specifically, who was maybe like a pair that didn't really work? Well, it's funny because I think Andy wanted them to be together because I think he knew that it wouldn't work. But obviously, Kenya and Michael Rappaport is like the quintessential example of two people that just did not jive. I mean, they were going after each other on Twitter before the show, like weeks before. And I think Andy was like, oh, this would be good TV. And it was. Yeah. But um, they definitely did not like each other. And then also she was on with Sherry Shepard. They didn't get along. I don't know if you ever saw Do you remember when um, Countess Luann was on with Kat Amini from Real Housewives of DC? Probably oh. not. But it was our it was a royal wedding spectacular. And I don't know what was going on with Kat, but she just like went after Luann. I don't even think they knew each other. She was just like, who do you think you are? You know, you're not the queen of etiquette and yada yada. I think she was sort of trying to, to maybe impress Andy that she could be full of drama. Maybe she wanted to be on another show or something. I don't know. But yeah. uh, she went after her. And Luann was sort of like, what? What is, what, what is this? You know, like, why is this woman going after me? When Danielle Staub was on with Lindsay Lohan, I feel like because Danielle's friends with um, Lindsay's mom, and I think Danielle was a little too comfortable with Lindsay or mm. something, you know, and Lindsay was sort of like, it, it was a little like a yeah, weird vibe. we're not vibe. friends. <laughs> yeah, like you're friends with my mom, like right. get off. Um, yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> okay, I have to ask about the episode that I love most. And I watch this clip <laughs> once every few months. Oh my God. It's when Brandy Glanville and oh. Jeff Lewis and the infamous wine yeah. toss. Yeah. Tell me about that night. Even to this day, I don't feel like anybody really knows what was going on because we were wavering between are they putting on a little show? Are they kidding? And then it got like dark and we we're like no they're they're not kidding. And then she started crying or was it real? I, it, honestly, we don't know. To this day. To this day, yeah. don't know. No. Cause like, yeah, she has <laughs> she has said over and over, it was a joke. Yeah. And I then don't... Jeff Lewis was like, but like it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, it's like one of those things where you try something and if it doesn't really work, you say it's a joke. Right. But I don't yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't think it I don't think he knew it was a joke. If if she did, he definitely didn't know for sure. Cause he was not acting. He was like really like, What is going on here? Yeah. Yeah. Are there any episodes for you like that that stand out? Deborah Winger. Yes. That was yes. that was another time where after the show, we were all drinking in the kitchen. Andy came in and we were like, wow. He was like shell-shocked. She didn't get the show. She didn't get him. A lot of times guests come on and maybe they've never seen the show before, but by the second or third act, they they get it and they see what's what it's all about. They see that Andy's not trying to screw them over. He's right. just like, you know whatever um but she didn't get it she didn't like his questions um that was bad oh she she sort of brought amanda pete down with her you know because amanda pete didn't really know what to do right and so i think she was trying to be on deborah winger's side you know just to like yeah. make her feel okay yeah that whole that was bad we actually i remember we were like drinking like in silence after that we were like oh this was not <laughs> <laughs> this is not right. <laughs> but these are few and far between, yeah. honestly. I mean, but that's why they stand out, because it really doesn't happen that often. But it's also, like, not – I mean, maybe it's rough for you guys, but it's great TV. great TV. Oh, totally. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 100%. We actually – what it is is we just feel bad for Andy. Right. You know? I mean, we love him, and he, we feel like he's an extension of us, you know, when he's out there. So we were sort of feeling what he was feeling, I think. If you were to, like, look back and think of – the oddest pairing of guests you've had on the show who would it be um i don't think it, it the show wasn't memorable but I, I it always stands out to me clay aiken and Jem, jenna jameson the porn mm. star I, I don't even remember anything about the show it was probably a void of a show but that one always stands out but i i love when we have um like newscasters like serious people it's all about andy's talked about this high and low and l saying low no disrespect you know but like you know dan rather and and john mayer he's right. not low but it's just different right. worlds yes. or anderson's been on with every housewife under the sun right um 
you know, Rachel Maddow, Maddow has been on with like Lil Jon and, and like Jenny Poulos. I like seeing people from different worlds that you know that they've never interacted in real life yeah. ever before. I also like that you clarified Jenna Jameson, the porn star, as if like. <laughs> well, I don't. I, I, she might be doing new things now. I'm sure she has a clothing line or some some skincare line. <laughs> we know who she is. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Andy has revealed who his least favorite guest of all time is. Jillian Michaels. Yeah. Yeah. Who's yours? Um, <laughs> probably Amber Rose. Oh, okay. She she just wasn't there to play. Mm. She wouldn't answer any of his questions. She was wearing sunglasses the whole time. She just, I don't think she understood our show. Um, I've seen her on other shows and she's great, but I, I just, I don't think she liked all, like, our show, if you think about the number of, que like the rate of questions per minute, our show compared to other shows, it's just rapid fire. Right. And I just don't think she liked all the questions and she felt like we were being invasive and it just didn't, it didn't work. Yeah. Jillian Michaels was also really scary too. Well, I mean, that was really scary. I would love to know your point of view. We don't, still to this day, I'm sure Andy's told you, like, I, he, we don't even know what set her off yeah we were this was a night it was a, the last show of the week and we were we were drinking in the office and all of a sudden she just busted out of her green room started screaming at the pas and we were like we didn't think anything was wrong in the show we thought oh that was fine whatever and she just something some question that he asked her or something some line of questioning she hated and she never told anybody what it was so to this day we don't really know but it was scary yeah yeah <laughs> I want to know maybe like one of your favorite moments over the years, looking back on 10 years. Um, I have two. The first one is Andy's 50th birthday party, where we produced the entire show without him knowing anything that was happening. Um, John Mayer was involved. We had all his friends involved. We have fun segments. and. I love any sort of surprise. Um, I love seeing Andy get surprised. He's got the best, like, shocked face, yes, he as does. you know. <laughs> um, so that that was just a real love fest behind the scenes and on camera for the the whole day, um, and it just felt really fun to do something for him because, um, you know, it was it was stressful because we wanted to make sure it was good, but overall it was just such a good feeling. Um, the other surprise that I love was when we surprised Jennifer Lawrence mm, uh, yes, because yes, she yes. had said on Instagram or something that her bucket list in life was to have a dinner party with Scott Disick. <laughs> yeah, Scott Disick, <laughs> Bethany and Luann. Exactly. Yes. So we didn't get Scott Disick. We yeah. did a cardboard cutout and then we had Luann and Bethany behind this. They call it a kabuki drop in production, which I had never really heard of. But it's basically it was like a huge curtain. And then at the last at, at, at the moment, the curtain drops and they were sitting there, you know, with their rosé um, and she freaked out that was that was really cool okay but my question is what was scott disick doing that night that was so important he couldn't make he it he was i think he actually was doing an appearance in ibiza or something oh. so they were like if you want him to come you have to pay for his private jet and we were like we're good we'll do a cardboard cutout <laughs> we love a cardboard cutout we're fine <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> have there ever been a, a pair of guests that went home together well, I mean, the obvious one is Jenny McCarthy and Donnie Wahlberg. Oh, right. That's like the quintessential love yes. connection of all love connections. Yes. Um, I don't think they went home together that night, but I know they exchanged numbers and immediately started going out after that. The rest is history. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Maybe under the radar? Um... Every time Sonya's on with somebody, I always <laughs> I always think that they're going to hook up, but I, I don't think they do. Um you know, uh, how Sonia hit on you? Oh, Sonia and I go way back. We have a great relation. We're like, we're good. Yeah. Okay. I actually, um, well, little known fact, I was the one that played the drums during her cabrilesque performance on the iPad in the control room with my my fingers. Wait, the one in Austin or the? No, not in Austin. That was a real drummer. Okay. The, <laughs> the one in the clubhouse. That's amazing. Um, so she always calls me her little drummer boy when she sees me. Aww. She's my favorite. She's my ultimate favorite. I'll tell anybody She's that wants to know. The best. Yeah. That's so funny. Okay. At the Real Housewives reunions, it's, it's kind of a trope. Like people want to know who's sitting next to Andy. Oh, That's yeah. a coveted spot. 
I assume it's sort of the same way for Watch What Happens Live. You know, the maybe more famous of the two guests gets the seat by Andy. Mm -hmm. Has there ever been drama over the seat next to Andy? I'm not going to name names, but yes, definitely. And it always is coming from Housewives. Uh, Yeah. For the most part, I mean, actually, all we always um, will put um, a woman next to Andy. Just it's just the right thing to do. It just seems weird to have just a guy next to him. I don't okay. Know. So that generally is how that works out. If there's a guy and a, and a, and a girl on the show together, but um, yeah, it definitely, it really just started happening over the past couple of years. I never even thought about it when we first started the show, and I don't, I don't think anyone really noticed. And then some of the housewives were like getting a little bit frustrated about like their seating. So now there's a whole formula like, you know, our talent team, I'm sure they have a spreadsheet somewhere that shows that, you know, well, Ramona's been next to Andy 20 times and, and Dorinda's been next to Andy 14 times. You know, I'm sure there's some formula, but they have it down now. How did the shot ski originate? So that was when we first went to five nights a week. Jimmy Fallon was one of our first guests. I think it was, he was on a Wednesday. And I don't know why he did it, but he and his wife made this shot ski in, in their home, <laughs> brought it in. In their woodworking. Uh, yeah, in their, in their <laughs> workshop. Um, <laughs> they brought it in, and then it was just, I think Andy was so shocked by it. It was such a thoughtful gift and so like out there that we started doing it every Wednesday night at the end of the show. And then one of us, we were like, wait, why don't we do it at the beginning? Like, just get them liquored up earlier and then see what happens. So, yeah, I think we've done it every single Wednesday. There might have been one or two nights where we didn't do it because there might have been, you know, even when there's like a a recovering alcoholic or somebody on the show, we still do it. Like, we'll have someone in the audience do it. But there was one moment, I can't remember why we didn't do it. We just felt like it would have been in poor taste. Like, one of the guests had just gone through something but some I we there was only one time we didn't do it actually yeah <laughs> interesting yeah. um okay I know you said Andy is a great boss but what's maybe like the most annoying thing about him as a boss oh it's funny because Melissa and I on our on our radio show throw him so much shade and he loves it like he's like keep it up um usually well it's not annoying but he's such a stir I mean that's why we love him so he'll come into the control room and he'll just like look around and be like who can i start some <laughs> with like people like divert th- their eyes like look down or whatever that's fun i mean it, when you're not a target it's you get a, a front row seat to it which is really fun i think probably i mean even like his celebrity friends will say this when you ask them to I mean, he's not so much now actually after his baby was born actually but he's always on his phone you know sometimes his attention isn't always right there with you but He's pretty cool about you calling him out on it. You could be like, ah, hello, we're talking. You know, he's fine about it. It's, it's yeah. not that annoying. But um, yeah, the shit stirring is is fun. But that it, it does get a little scary sometimes when you're like, oh my god, am I going to be the target today? <laughs> and it's all, I mean, it's all like stupid stuff. It's yeah. not like, yeah. Um, has him becoming a father recently changed, you know, his schedule on the show or how he does things? You know what? Not really. He lives so close to the studio. I mean, it's like a five minute car ride if that so um not really because you know he comes in around you know between nine and ten and that's when he always used to come in so he can be with his baby you know during the day and and early evening put the baby to bed and then go to work i mean it's actually like the perfect situation for him um yeah no it hasn't really changed have there ever been guests that weirdly became friends after the show the one that always sticks out on my mind and i don't know how this happened but suzanne summers um, and Nick Carter from the Backstreet Boys, they had a love fest. She ended up going to his show or the Backstreet Boys show afterwards, and they stayed in touch randomly. Wow. But And also, generally, I feel like anytime you put any housewife on with Jerry O'Connell or Michael Rappaport, by the end of the show, their numbers will be in each other's phones, and they're like in a text relationship with them. That's so funny. Yeah. Except Kenny Moore. Except Kenny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Jerry's ha- he's he hasn't had any beef with anybody. I mean, he's Jerry. He's so nice. Yeah. No. yeah. You know, sometimes when I'm watching the show, like callers come in, call in, and they're either, I don't know, playing the drinking game. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great way to put it. Or clearly playing some sort of prank. How does how do they get through? And like, how do you guys handle that? You know, our producers that are on the phones are so good at their jobs. Like, they 
usually can snuff out if somebody's kind of somebody has like an ulterior motive but there are times when it gets through and the first couple of times it happened i remember being like oh my god drop the call like move on to the next one and and i remember andy being like wanting to engage with them even more like one time someone called and was like you know F- you andy Cohen, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and he just laughed hysterically he loved it yeah I think he loves, I mean, he loves live TV too. He loves when things go wrong, which is fun for us. I mean, like I don't, as a producer, I don't love like when we have stupid mistakes, like when we spell something wrong or whatever. But part of the fun of a live TV show is when things go wrong and he, he, he thrives on it. So yeah. That's so funny. Well, like I, sorry, when, um, when years ago, when we gave Patty LaBelle crabs, um because she loves crabs <laughs> and um all of a sudden the lights went out i don't know why but it was like pitch black right yes and i remember we were in the control room being like all right go to commercial go to commercial but andy was like no uh-uh this was this is hilarious he loved it like he thrives on those kind of awkward That's so moments funny. you know i remember when lady gaga was on the show ralph fiennes was in the audience oh yeah yeah ha- are there ever have there ever been celebrities in the audience that didn't want the camera on them? Well, when Leah Rem- Rem- when Leah Remini was on one of our first times, we got word that J-Lo was going to be the audience. She didn't want to be on camera. I don't even think she wanted us to mention that she was there. Um, that was exciting. Yeah. And then a lot of times when Andy's friends come, like, like um, John Benjamin Hickey, like he'll always sit in the audience. We love him. He's like our favorite when he's around. He's like the best energy ever. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. The, the JLo one was like really excited. That might have been before she was even on our show or maybe she had only been on like once or twice. Yeah. So she's been on a bunch now. But back then we were like, oh, my God, JLo's here. That's amazing. Yeah. What a good friend she is to Leah to I be know. like, don't let him know I'm here. I know, let right? Leah have the attention. Can you imagine being an audience member and you're sitting there and all of a sudden you look to your right and JLo's <laughs> sitting right there, <laughs> like having a drink? <laughs> Amazing. All right. Lastly, if you could sum up your entire Watch What Happens Live career in one phrase or sentence, what would it be? Uh, it would be lightning in a bottle because it's so unusual for a TV show to be on for 10 years, I mean, even five years. Um, I think we're so lucky that we all still have a really good time doing it. And I think Andy's mainly responsible for that. Like he, it, it kind of stems from the top. I mean, he, his energy is contagious. And I think we all just love coming to work still after 10 years. I mean, there are times when I go home and like my face is hurting because we're smiling so much in the control room. So yeah, lightning in a bottle. This isn't going to happen again. We're so lucky that we're a part of this. Um, yeah. Great. Thank you so much for coming uh, by. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Deirdre Connolly is the executive producer of Watch What Happens Live, which basically means she's the main lady in charge behind the scenes. She's been with the show since its conception and definitely knows all the behind the scenes stories. In this interview, she reminisces about her favorite moments over the years, one of which includes a dog marriage. Who wouldn't love that moment? <laughs> Here's that interview. Okay, so welcome Deirdre Connolly. First, I want you to tell fans what your title on the show is and what that means, what your day-to-day looks like. Um, So I am the executive producer of Watch What Happens Live, which means I really oversee the entire staff, which is a lot of management of staff, overseeing the creative, uh, dealing with Andy on a daily basis and approving talent ideas and basically having a hand in every little thing that makes it onto air. Wow. And you've been with the show since it began, right? Yes. Yeah. 10 years. Wow. <laughs> what were you doing before? How'd you get the job? Um, I had been working at MTV. I worked at Total Request Live, the first one. Um, and so I'd always worked in live TV and studio based shows. So when I was looking for my next sort of freelance gig, this guy that I knew from MTV knew Eli Lair at Bravo. And they were looking for somebody to do Watch What Happens Live for, I think it was 10 episodes at the time. So it would have covered about three months of a summer. And I met with Michael Davies at Embassy Row, and we kind of clicked about just approaching how we approach live production. And they hired me, and I thought it was going to be a summer, and here we are 10 years later. So After that first show went on air, did you think, wow, we have a hit? 
Um, I'd like to say yes, but not really. Um, I felt like it was servicing an audience for sure. I knew I was a fan of Bravo anyway. I was already watching Housewives and I knew my friends were. So it was certainly servicing the people who were already talking about those shows. But I didn't know that it would really grow beyond that. And I don't know that I had a sense of where it was headed until probably we hit our stride pretty early on, though. I would say like eight episodes in. I think we had we had Tina Fey at some point in that first year and she was really into Bravo and she came and she just was like I just am so happy to be here you know and I felt like okay this is beyond just inside Bravo this is a pop pop culture sort of phenomenon and has a lot of potential and then I would go out and meet people at random parties and they're like you work on Watch What Happens Live oh my god I love that show you know so I think it started pretty early on that we realized there was something more to it that's awesome at what point I mean do you does it still shock you that it's made it this far or now are you like yeah it's an amazing show I get it uh I really do get it I mean I think it's very unique I don't we just started to our approach always was to build it around Andy's point of view and his interests and then also to be looking online at the conversation that was happening and then expanding that and being able to have a two-way conversation with people on Twitter um, at that time and so I kind of I did get it and I knew we were doing something different and that it was specific to people who were interested in Bravo first, but also just sort of brought pop culture at large. So um, I, I, I get it. <laughs> In all of these 10 years, what has a moment maybe stuck out that you're like, wow, we've made it? Uh, there's There has been a lot. Um, I think early on, like I said, Tina Fey coming was pretty big. Um, Meryl Streep coming, I think, I mean, my timing's so off, but in the first couple of years anyway, Oprah coming, share. I think there was a real sense of if you want to reach a female audience, this was the stop to come to. It, you know, you knew that the people who were watching Watch What Happens Live were predominantly women. It's a very engaged audience. And if you have a project where you want to reach these women, this is a, a perfect place to come. So I think once we realized that, you know, publicists were looking at it very seriously as a must stop for their talent was you know a highlight for me and there's just been so many big names and moving to a new studio we did that uh like two and a half years ago um and that just felt so great you know we had started in this closet and had a teeny tiny control room where I don't even know that we could all sit down properly (laughs) because there wasn't enough seats but and then we moved to this huge beautiful state-of-the-art studio and that felt like a big moment for us as a production so there's been lots of of moments throughout the years you know watch what happens live is for sure quirky has there ever been a moment where you were like oh we've gone too far um I mean I'm sure if we looked back at things I would think oh god I don't think we could do that anymore but um I think you know it's a roll with the punches kind of team Andy's a roll with the punches kind of guy when things don't work out it's not like a you know the sky is falling moment it's kind of like eh We're not going to do that again. Okay, moving on. You know, when you're doing five shows a week, uh, there's not a lot of time to get bogged down in what may may not have worked. So you just kind of keep it moving and learn from any mistakes that you make. But I don't know that we've really gone too far. I don't know. Probably. I can't remember. (laughs) (laughs) Um, What is it like to work with Andy? Um, well, he was a producer. You know, actually, we have a pretty similar background in terms of the kind of production that we were doing, except that he was in news, but he was doing a lot of live segment producing prior to uh, his career at Bravo at, at CBS News. So I think we had a real sense of how live TV worked and what, you know, just making sure it's all about being decisive and not having to have six possible plans, just locking into a plan making sure you're communicating, and that's how he is. He's very communicative. He um, is still very involved in the day-to-day creative of the show, approving ideas. Um, I think we understand his point of view. He understands our point of view, and he's just a very direct person, so it's really actually very easy to work for him because there's just, it's, there's no BS, basically. (laughs) Hmm. Does he have any pre-show rituals? 
Um, well, he has had the same meal, I think, pretty much every <laughs> night for 10 years. He does. What? He orders Lupe's Pollo Norteño. I think at this point it's kind of like he just doesn't feel like giving it any thought into changing it up, but he eats that a lot in 10 years. So, yeah. That's wow. Of his <laughs> every show of now, I know just working at Bravo, I get asked all the time how to get people watch What Happens Live tickets. So you must get asked all the time. My question is, have you ever offered it up to get out of something or to get something? Um, to get something, sure. To get out of something, I don't think so. But I feel like, yeah, like um, little things, like at a restaurant in my neighborhood or something opening that I'm like, oh, by the way, I work at Watch What Happens Live and nice. you ever want to come and, <laughs> you know, just little things, yeah. Yeah. And it usually works. But no, like, trying to bribe a judge out of getting out of jury no, duty. No, <laughs> never, never anything like that. <laughs> um, Plead the Fifth has become just so iconic, especially because we get all of this information from celebrities we wouldn't otherwise have. Is there anything that sticks out to you over the years? You're like, I can't believe someone just admitted that. Um, yeah, I think I think it's like a you know psychological warfare where you really feel compelled to tell the thing, even though it's obviously not. You're under no legal obligation to do so. <laughs> um, I yeah, Re- Ray Liotta admitted that his worst on-screen kiss was Sigourney Weaver, which was just really random but yeah. revealing and. Um, yeah, there's always like little tidbits and you're and people are just like they feel the pressure, you know, so it's a lot. And it, we generate so much press from it. I mean, there's always pick up and you see it in every magazine, every site, everything. So it's kind of like one of our like go to ways of making sure that pe- there's press pickup. Yeah. You know, it's always been said that there's like this competition amongst late night shows Do you feel now like Watch What Happens Live, which started maybe a lot, you know, more recently than some of the big ones, but do you feel now like colleagues to these other big late night shows? Sure. I think that we do, and I'm sure Andy does. I think it is one of the shows that started based on him. I don't even know if there's really anything exactly like it. Obviously, Samantha Bee and things like that, but like, you know, The Tonight Show is something that has been ongoing and hosts have taken over and changed but it's sort of the format is what it is and then the hosts get plugged into it where watch what happens live was always built around andy and to have it on for 10 years i don't know that there's really a comparable success story like that exactly so um but yeah so i i feel that way great and andy has revealed who his least favorite celebrity guest is who's yours um Hmm. What did he say? <laughs> he said it was Jillian Michaels. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, I just don't like people who come and aren't game with the format. You know, like Amber Rose. I don't know if she was just having a bad day, but she just was not having it. She just wasn't giving anything. And I do think there's a certain amount of go with itness, if that's an expression, that you have to have when you come on. You know, if you. We're serving cocktails. We're not doing pre-interviews. Like, it's just supposed to be, like, you're eavesdropping on a really fun sort of conversation at a party, you know? And so I think the majority of people who come are up for that, and they that's what they're looking for, and that's actually kind of a relief to them at the end of a long press day where they've been telling the same stories and going through and talking about the same thing after the same thing, and then they come to our show at, late at night, give them a cocktail. It's like, relax. It's usually their last stop. And so if you're not up for that, I think it just doesn't really work for you. And I don't think it was something Jillian Michaels was into. And I think people like Amber Rose just wasn't for her either. Yeah. You don't have to name names. But have you ever gotten like a really weird uh, request, like even like a writer for the green room? You know, not really. I do think people are coming and being their most chill selves. I really do. Like it's not... I mean, there's always the alcohol requests, which is, like, interesting. But we are asking them that. We would say the only thing we ask is what would you like to have for a drink. I think Oprah asked for this very 
expensive high-end tequila that I can't remember the name of it, but I don't know that she actually drank it. So then mm. we had it. <laughs> it tasted just like tequila, but um, but yeah. So like I think those there's like it, you learn a little bit about people when they're ordering specific drinks, you know. But other than that, I think people are coming and they're very low key and chill. Yeah, who's easier to deal with, celebrities or Bravo celebrities? Um, well, I would say probably celebrities because we're A, seeing them less, <laughs> B, um, they don't have the relationship with Andy that Bravo celebrities do. So mm -hmm. even if it's, even if he's not exactly an executive producer on a certain show, but you know, for the Housewives he is, he's their boss. So it's a different kind of, what they're bringing is just a different energy. You know, they are, um, probably a little more on edge than just a regular celebrity, you know, because they're meeting their boss and they know that it's in, in what they want to say and they're probably answering to a feud that they're having and what, you know, making sure that they're getting their message out. So they're just a little more amped up about it. So I think they're probably just ever so slightly more difficult. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, Andy wears uh, an earpiece during mm -hmm. the show. Are you on? I'm on as I was as main. That was me just me for a long time and now John Jude and Melissa also talk to him so we're mostly you obviously there's the work part of it which is keeping him to time telling him what's going on um, like if anything's changing or if a caller dropped or if something isn't ready to play like a tape or something like that you know we'll just jump, jump in his ear like skip that do this to, you know and you have to be very quick because it's distracting to hear somebody talking in your ear while you're trying to have a conversation so we limit you know, when it's live, we limit a lot of what we're saying. But then during rehearsal, it's a lot of like joking around and it's very free and we're just kind of like, it's it's fun. What do you do during rehearsal? Like, what are you rehearsing? Um, so we um, basically are just blocking out different games. Um, it's just really for us to know exactly what works and what doesn't. And, you know, if we're going to do something with, say, a green screen, we just want to make sure where people land or if we're having a drag queen contest, we want to make sure that the drag queens know where they're going and all that kind of stuff. So it's really just sort of like making sure our plan actually makes sense and that everyone's on the same page, like from our crew to production staff to Andy to our PAs. Everybody just knows what the plan is, and it's a good chance for us to get together and see everything that we've been working on during the day come together. Even though you have basically a dream job, I feel like all jobs have moment, the things that you just don't like doing. What's mm -hmm. the one thing you just don't look forward to doing? Um, I make other people do those things. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, What don't I like doing? I mean, I'm, I'm not just saying this. It is a dream job. It is very fun. I think we laugh every day. Um, it never causes me that feeling like, oh, I gotta go into that place. Like, it's just really not like that. The culture is, is what, what I think a viewer would imagine it to be. You know, we all love Bravo. We love pop culture. We love gossip. Um, we love jokes and the segment ideas and puns and all that kind of stuff. So everybody's very passionate and kind of curious about the world at large so I think we all kind of have a, the same sensibility so there's really nothing about it that is you know torturous I guess what is the most annoying thing about working with Andy um hmm. I'm gonna be careful now um what is the most he um chews food weirdly and I've said oh. that to him before and he doesn't know what I mean and it's what hard do to you mean he just like we'll pick up a piece of food and like it's kind of like in the middle of not in the middle of a conversation but when he's rehearsing or something and then then he leaves his plate behind so mm. that's not that exciting of an annoying thing I know but, wow yeah. he must be great yeah. <laughs> that's the worst <laughs> do you feel like it's changed at all since he's had a baby um not it's funny I couldn't I when I first found out that he was having a baby I really didn't know what that would mean in terms of even just scheduling and how it would impact what we do or anything like that but I think it's been just a really positive change he's just so happy not that he wasn't happy before but this is a whole other level and he's just really it's just cute you know he's always showing us little videos and 
it's just a kind of a fun new chapter in all of our lives to have like this little watch what happens live baby that we get to hear about and um and he just seems a lot more um yeah just a lot happier and what about andy's other baby waka are you a fan um well waka doesn't really get along with my dog linda so um bad blood there's a thing (laughs) (laughs) does your dog come to work with you um well she's a six pound yorkie so she's a little (laughs) bit of a different story than waka but um she comes like a couple every couple months she'll come and when waka's there she's like (sighs) not interested i want to know if how stressful it is when these a-list celebrities come through the studio if at all um i actually think it's kind of the opposite it it adds a lot of energy you know because we do do this every you know five times a week and it can become a little bit of a like not a grind exactly but just sort of like oh you're it's just keeping moving it doesn't always feel like so different on a day-to-day so when it is somebody that's like wow we landed Lady Gaga Cher what whoever it may be it's just this like excitement I think for me personally the most exciting kind of A-list experience that I've had was when we did Andy's 50th birthday and had John Mayer host and kept it secret from Andy. And it was just this like recharge because the way we approached production was very different. We had to keep everything secret from Andy and he didn't know what we were doing. And he just, I remember him saying to me like, if it's just like a doorbell with Sonia doing Cabrillesque, like we don't have to do it, you know? And I was like, it's not that, don't worry. Like, it's awesome, you know, it's good. You're gonna be happy, just don't ask any questions. So he did not ask any questions and he just showed up and it was fun working with John about how, you know, just he was so happy to be able to do it for Andy and he was so engaged in the whole process and adding ideas and emailing ideas about songs he wanted to sing. and. It was just like kind of a recharge, I think, in terms of, you know, excitement to our day-to-day jobs. What is your favorite moment looking back on 10 years? Oh, my gosh. I love, like, oh, I mean, there's there are really lots, but I feel like, for me, the things that I tend to talk about the most are, I, we did a New Year's show. I don't know if it was our first year or our second year, and we dealt with Derek J for who was a house a hairdresser on Real Housewives of Atlanta to create a wig drop which we didn't even know what that was we just <laughs> thought like oh that sounds weird instead of a ball drop it'll be a wig um, and when we got it it just was the craziest thing we ever saw but we're like we spent money on it so we're we're going to drop the wig um, and when it came down it just still I can watch it a million times and it will make me laugh and the whole thing was just this kind of like weird night of Jiggy getting married to Grandma Wrinkles and Kim Zolciak performing and just everything that's quirky and strange about Watch What Happens Live all coming together um, I think Megan McCain was there she was probably like what's going on um, so it was just a, one of those like really kind of like oh we are we're doing something different here like we're not a cookie cutter (laughs) late night talk show you know so yeah it's probably one of my favorites it's great thank you so much well thank you for having me yes lastly we have t kyle who is the lead digital and social producer so he basically creates all of those housewives dancing videos that we know and love on the watch what happens live instagram page here he talks about trying to impress andy cohen with his tweets he apparently looks at everything and clarifies how you can get watch what happens live tickets Ooh, everyone pay attention you won't want to miss that moment let's take a listen Guys, we are here with T. Kyle from Watch What Happens Live. Hi, T. Kyle. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? (laughs) I'm good. (laughs) So can you tell our listeners exactly what it is that you do at Watch What Happens Live? Yes. So I am the lead digital and social producer. So I do a bunch of different things. I do the YouTube channel, all the clips that you see from Watch What Happens Live on bravotv.com that go up right after the show. Tweets, Instagram, Instagram stories, the whole, like, anything digital Watch What Happens Live is kind of my umbrella. Amazing. Yeah. So what came first, working at Watch What Happens Live or your incredible meme creation? Um, the <laughs> memes came first. <laughs> memes always come yeah. first. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was actually GIFs. Um, animated GIFs came first. Right. And animated GIFs got me my job at Watch What Happens Live. That's so funny. Which sounds weird to say. Right. Um, but it was, like, a very 
strange but amazing journey. Yeah. That whole I time. mean, that's how I got my job here through Twitter. Like, it was just like a random yeah. series of events, like via social media. Mm hmm. That's what happens nowadays in 2019. Um, so backstage, you often get the guests to do like really fun things. There's always like dancing or whatever. So how do you like get them excited and motivated to do those things? Well, most celebrities I find have a really good sense of humor. And so we're doing this one thing now. If you guys see it, it's on our Instagram story. And it's Housewives Dancing to completely random songs. Yes. It is one of the favorite, my favorite things that we're doing right now. It started and with Ramona. Did you start with or? Yeah, it started with Ramona and her dancing to Cardi B. Yes. Which is just, you know, a beautiful contrast. <laughs> and um, so other housewives would see it and then they would come and we'd be like, oh, we want you to dance. And they're like, oh, we, we know what you're talking about. So right. they would do it. And then we would just tell them, like, we're going to pick the song and they trust us to make it, like, entertaining. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, people show up and they know that we're there to have fun. And if they're uncomfortable, we, like, don't make them, we don't, like, force you know, of everyone course. would flip their hair and, you know, dance in front of the step and repeat. Right. But uh, we have a really good talent team. Anthony has been there for years. And so a lot of people know him really well. And so he just asked them and they do it. Recently, you guys did a skit with Paris Hilton, recreating a Simple Life interns mm -hmm. moment. What was she like to work with? Okay, that is one of my favorite things I've ever done <laughs> at that show because... I didn't expect, like, sometimes there's, like, housewives who won't stay and do stuff because they have early, like, a lot of celebrities have really early calls the next morning. Mm -hmm. And so she stayed with us until 1.30 in the morning. Oh, my God. And I tell people this, and it's so weird because I'm like, it's Paris Hilton. She had a 4 a.m. call the next morning, and she literally stayed in full glam with us, taking direction, going around the office. There was only, like, five of us left at this point. And did everything we asked. She started improving, she, like the vacuum and everything. Like that was all her. She was laughing the whole time. Like she knew what she was doing. She's very self aware. She's really, really, really funny. Yeah, she's a pro. It's it's <laughs> kind of crazy. Have you ever had a celebrity like really shut you down and be like, "I'm not going to do anything fun," like full diva move? Um, no. It's usually just, it's like a technical thing. They're like, we have glam at 4 a.m. or, right. you know, we have to get on a flight or usually with like A-list people. Sometimes we pre-tape, which I think everyone knows at this point. Um, and they just have to leave. Right. Like yeah. it's not like. It's a, like a logistical thing. It's right. Not... They're not like, I don't want to be on your Instagram story. Right. How dare you? No. <laughs> it's just like, we have a, we have to get on a, a, a cab to like the airport. <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> So when you're creating like social media content for all of your channels is like one of your goals to like, we want Andy to retweet this. Or we want Andy to share it. Like, do you have him in mind often? Always. Yeah. Um, we have a, a doc, a running Google doc and we, we mark everything. And if he likes it or comments, we highlight it in blue. So it is funny. It's like, we obviously have an audience that we cater to and then, Everyone at Bravo is obviously looking at everything I do. So we make jokes. And so I'm like, is this going too far? Will people get this? You know, like, I never know if it's going to, like, toe the line. Right. Because, you know, I, I have a weird sense of humor. But, um, and with him, yeah, I'm always like, he literally looks at everything. Yeah. Every, every Instagram post, tweet, Instagram story, he looks at. Um, but he's really good. Like, if he sees something that he thinks is, like, really funny, he always comes over to us. And he's like, that was so funny that was gold yeah yeah well it's like i feel like you guys can get away with a little bit more just mm -hmm. because it's andy and like what he gets away with on the show talking to talent so i think you guys can be a little a little more cheeky on social media yeah. than you know necessarily like the bravo brand could be right <laughs> we're, we never try and be we're not mean we always just try and like i don't know look right. at things well, like different highlight lens. yeah and like <laughs> highlight the moments that like people are talking about right. too in like a kind of funny mm -hmm. way um, I've found that, like, since starting at Bravo, you know, a lot of people are sliding into my DMs asking about Watch What Happens Live tickets. So can you oh, clarify yes. how people can get Watch What Happens Live tickets as opposed to, like, DMing you or me? Yeah. So, well, you can do that. Um, <laughs> so the thing is, there is a month-long waiting list. It's, like, th usually three to four months, and a lot of it is charity winners. So that's, like, one of the really cool things, I think. And I don't really – we don't really talk about it a lot, but – a lot of the people that fill up the audience are people who've donated money to charity for tickets. Um, and then the other half is friends of the people who are on the show mm -hmm. and the bartender, friends of Andy. 
And then um, we do get fans in, but it is a really long waiting list. So people do DM me and it's nothing crazy, but like if I get a request and I'm, I know that there might be availability, I will send over their stuff. So yeah. if they send me something funny or like if they, if they send a housewives quote or like, I know that they're a mega fan. I'm right. like, okay, I'll like reach out and like go the extra mile to like, try and get you hooked up have you ever had someone make like a really insane request for like what they would do for tickets um no <laughs> no it's usually just like i'm gonna be in town next week do you have tickets right. and i'm like oh it's girl it's booked like <laughs> or like i'm in town right now and i'm like uh, we're live in an hour like right. um usually it's just i can't like it's not well, doable, I, think, but... I think it's good to know for fans then that they should plan ahead because I feel like that does happen very mm-hmm. often when they're in town. That's when they feel like they want to do it. But I think a lot of people also don't recognize how small the studio is and it's yeah. not a huge audience no. to, to fill. So it fills up pretty quickly. Yeah. And the thing is, I would just say to people, like, if you're on social media, like, engage with the show, engage with Andy, like, and then we will notice you. Yeah. And maybe, you know, sometimes we surprise people in DMs every now and then. Ooh. Um, when tickets are given to us. Right. Um, so, yeah. So, move those Twitter fingers, guys. Yes. <laughs> be nice, and <laughs> you will be rewarded. Right, maybe. right. Kindness is rewarded. It is. And um, humor. Right. Mm-hmm. So, when Watch What Happens Live received its first Emmy nomination, how did you react to that? It was... I. This is going to sound weird, but I reacted in a way that was like, okay, what is it that we have to do to win? Like, what can we do next to, like almost not like change what we were already doing, but I was like, what can we add to the show to make us stand out now? Cause it's, we're so many years into the, um, into our history. Um, which I think, I don't know that's like a weird reaction, but like we did, um, this new thing. It's the walkabout on Facebook messenger. I'm just going to plug my own thing that I, um, <laughs> Please. but we worked on, um, I worked with like, um, some folks here at Bravo, on this Facebook messenger bot that you, if you guys use Facebook, message him. His name is Waka the Dog. It's a little digital Waka. And we did this thing because, like, I wanted more people to be able to submit questions because not everyone's on Twitter, not everyone's on Instagram, but a lot of people are on Facebook or just messenger alone. Like, you don't even need to be on Facebook. Um, And so I brought that and kind of promoted that. And I was like, maybe this could get us, like, that edge for interaction and interactivity and late night because I didn't see anyone else doing it and we do get audience questions which is you know not everyone does that like you know interacts with everyone on a one-on-one level um but yeah I'm hoping that maybe that will be like a little help right the little nudge that it needs yeah did you ever think it would become such a pivotal show in late night television? I feel like it's really on the map to people who are even outside of Bravo at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, I see. I always loved Watch Robins Live because it was so niche. Like I loved that it was, and like I've always had like a thing for like niche audiences, like mm-hmm. niche humor, like that kind of thing. And so it felt like this kind of like underground pop culture thing. Like I loved Tumblr back in the day. Like that was very underground at one point. Um. But yeah, like to see mega like Oscar winners be on our show and just kick back and talk about Below Deck is crazy sometimes. Like right. it's, yeah. Well, that was going to be my next question. Were there any celebrities that have come in that you were surprised to be Bravo fans? Because I feel like there's a lot of like random celebs that are like hugely into Bravo. Yeah. There's a lot of like A-list, highbrow people that like I never thought would watch reality TV, let alone like, you know, Bravo and Housewives. And they're obsessed with it. Yeah. Um, which is just so funny to me. Like Jennifer Lawrence, I think, is one of them. You guys have mm-hmm. seen it. We surprised her with Luann and Bethany. And like, I got to stand backstage like while th- afterwards and she sat down and Luann and Bethany were just like telling her the whole story about how she got, you know, the little incident that, you know, happened in Palm Beach. Um, oh, yeah. But she, they were just, like, kicking back on the couches, and she's, like, telling Jennifer Lawrence, like, it's her best friend. And it was so funny and so incredible to watch. Right. And just hear everything. You're, like, you're an Oscar-winning actress yeah. sitting here, like, gushing mm-hmm. over Luann. She's, like, what happened? And she's, like, Luann's just, like, well, you know, and told her the whole story, and it was, oh, it was everything. Have you ever had a celebrity guest on the show that you were surprised how open they are? Because, like, you know, people get a little liquored up backstage. Mm-hmm. So have you ever been surprised by someone and, like, what they've revealed on the show? Um, I think 
like an actual thing that someone said. I mean, to bring up the legend again, Paris Hilton, um, <laughs> I was really shocked at how open she was on the show because I, I mean, I've been a fan for a really long time and she kind of shuts off whenever there's like gossip now, like it's not really her thing recently. And she just like, she just didn't hold back at all. And I appreciate when celebrities do that because it's just, it makes it fun. And it's like, you know that they're not overthinking and they're not like too in their own head and they're just sitting there and telling the truth. And and that's the place to do it. Yeah. You know? Like there's, <clears throat> excuse me, there's not a lot of other opportunities. I feel like when, you know, celebrities are doing talk shows or something like that to really like throw a little shade, you know, it doesn't right. really come up in a lot of other press outlets. So it's like, that's the place to do it. Mm -hmm. Do you ever get recognized out in public for working on the show or just for being on, you know, Twitter and social media? Yeah. Which <laughs> I do. Um, I think it's just cause I've been like doing stuff on the internet for so long. And like, I come from this like Tumblr world and reality TV gifts and mm -hmm. then YouTube. I'm just like all over the place, like just doing literally anything and everything. Um, so some people do know, cause it is that like that niche audience, which I like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's pride month. So mm -hmm. we know that there's a lot of exciting things going on here at Bravo and everything. You know, Andy was just recently awarded at Glad. So how is this month really celebrated for you? Just knowing everything that Andy's being recognized for, the show's being recognized for, like, does this Pride Month feel a little different to you? Yeah, I think for me personally, I think going to the GLAAD Awards and hearing Andy talk was huge for me because for me growing up, I didn't think I would ever be successful. Like I kind of was told like, you're gay, like you need to cut that out or you're not gonna be, like you're not gonna get a job. You know, all these things, not to go like too deep here on the Bravo Daily Dish. <laughs> no, please. Um, but when I went to college, that's when I started watching Bravo and I saw Andy and he was always out from the get go. Like immediately it was just himself and you never saw, like he didn't have like a big coming out story moment. Like he just was always himself. And I remember seeing that and I was like, okay, I was told all these things for so long, but he's doing it. Like he's on camera. Like he's not just being himself like on the internet. He's like in front of mil literally millions of people. He has his own show. I was like, I could be successful if he can do it. And um, I actually like, you know, years back, I told him that. I was like, just so you know, like this is huge for someone like me to see you on TV. And so now fast forward, he's able to use his platform that he's built to bring on guests and bartenders and help promote people and help people promote their books and their podcasts and whatever artistic venture it is that they do. He is now giving back in that sense, as well as like using the show to like raise money for charity and all these other things. Like, I just think it's really cool and really inspiring that he is able to do that and give other people an opportunity and, and kind of shine his spotlight and, give that to other people Absolutely. in small ways and big ways. Yeah, it's hugely important to be able to see someone in the public eye like Andy who's like you and being like, oh, okay, wait, I can do that. Like, I think everyone, LGBT, you know, minorities, everyone needs someone to look up to like that. Mm -hmm. And we have Andy. Who else would we want, you yeah. know? And even if you, like, because I, you know, not everyone obviously likes everyone. Like, not everyone's going to watch What Happens Live or think that Andy's funny, but, like, you can't take that away from him that he paved a huge path. I also think about RuPaul. RuPaul was huge for me as well growing up. I remember seeing him on MTV in drag and I was like, oh my gosh, if that guy can do it in drag in front of all these people, like that's bravery to me. And mm -hmm. so um, it's like whatever you think about them, you can't deny the fact that they paved a way for more people to do the same thing. Absolutely. Well said. Thank you. So in addition to Watch What Happens Live, you have two podcasts. One is about our shared obsession Britney Spears. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about that. So I've really gotten into podcasts lately. Um, and last year was the 20th anniversary of Baby One More Time. It's been a long time. Um, and me and my best friend Brad, we got together last year and we just started recording this podcast called Britney Podcast. And um, we just wanted to go through every single year and just do a full deep dive on literally every single thing from the whole um, experience. It feels like I spilled my whole life in <laughs> 20 episodes, honestly. Um, and so, yeah, every single, um, well, some episodes have, or some years have more than one episode mm -hmm. and we have a couple like bonus ones sprinkled throughout, but yeah, if you're a casual listener, I think you'll love it and like hear things that maybe you don't know. 
a lot of people still don't know about Glory, her last album. How so they not? I would just like to plug it again here. Uh, <laughs> By Gloria on iTunes. Yeah, yeah don't edit that out. Uh, <laughs> no, but like literally every single time I get the opportunity the past three years, I'm like, oh, by Glory. Um, but yeah, and I also think for people who are mega fans, they'll love it too because like I'm one as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, hell yeah. And what is the other podcast that you have? I know you have two. Yeah, so I do a weekend chat every week. I just kind of sit on my couch and just discuss whatever this week was. What did you discuss last week? Um, I discuss my, I say what I'm shaking my tits to, which is my song (laughs) of the week. Am I allowed to say tits on this thing? Absolutely. (laughs) Um, I talk about that and then I will talk about anything in pop culture that I think is like popped out. And then um, I do like a personal like therapy thing. Like what am I thinking about whatever this week I love that. What are you shaking your tits to this week? Um, it's a song by Three Lau called Better Without You. And also I've been listening to the Jonas Brothers oh, yeah. new album yeah, yeah, yeah. nonstop. <laughs> but I said that last week, so I was like, do I just say it again? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Keep plugging it. Um, what about Madonna? Have you listened to her new album came out last just last night? I haven't yet. I haven't either. I haven't I had know. time. I'm like I like to put my phone on airplane mode and go on a walk and listen to like the whole start to finish and not take any breaks. Oh, I love I that. I just haven't had like a, you know, right. Got to carve out yet. time for that. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally though. Maybe on your walk out of here, you mm-hmm. can just like airplane mode it. I might actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much T Kyle for coming in. We yeah, appreciate it. Happy 10 year anniversary to watch what happens live. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I love that phrase, shaking your tits to describe songs you love. Happy 10-year anniversary to Watch What Happens Live. Thanks for being such a groundbreaking part of Late Night. Also, major thank you to Melissa Franz, John Jude, Deirdre Connolly, and T. Kyle for stopping by Bravo HQ to talk to us. We really enjoyed hearing all of your stories. And don't forget to subscribe to The Daily Dish. We'll be back with a regularly scheduled episode on Thursday. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Mazel. And remember, watching Bravo isn't a guilty pleasure. It's self-care. Guys, let's keep the conversation going. We want to talk to you all week long, not just Thursdays. You can find us on Twitter or Instagram at Bravo TV. Don't forget to use the hashtag Bravo Daily Dish. Or reach out to us personally. I'm everywhere at Meg Segura. And I'm Eric J. Mack, E-R-I-K. And if you're on Facebook, join the Daily Dish Facebook group. You can post about what you're watching, your favorite shows, who's your favorite housewife, ask a question, start some drama. There's a lot of good stuff in there, so check it out. You can also learn more about the podcast at bravotv.com. T-T-Y-L. Bye. Bye. Looking fine and I got my girls with me. With the boys at the table.